Minister and Madam Secretary, my name is Melanie and I'm going to discuss how preventative health and innovations in infrastructure can reduce health expenditure as a population agents and support a healthier and more engaged population. Now the first point to notice, and you'll see this on your graph, is that it's not just the effect of ageing that's causing an increase in health expenditure over the next few decades. We are seeing a remarkable increase in health expenditure, with ageing contributing a significant but not majority share of that increase. So therefore, all policy options need to adopt a population-wide approach to reducing this level of health expenditure. The second point to note is that with health expenditure, health expenditure increases over the last 10 years has been at a growth rate of 5%. Now this exceeds GDP, which has been at a 3.6 growth rate. So we need to address the fact that health expenditure is increasing at an unsustainable rate. The third thing to consider with the effects of ageing on this graph is that amongst 65 to 69 year olds in 2009, 41% reported some level of disability. Now, from a health perspective, we need to address this level of disability and intentionally productive labour force to address potential labour shortages that my previous colleagues had discussed. So our major recommendation is for preventative health strategies to be integrated at a population-wide level. Now, this is drawing on evidence that 32% of Australia's total disease burden due to modifiable risk factors like alcohol, smoking and obesity. We recommend a national preventative health initiative composed of three major components. Firstly, a national public health campaign targeting modifiable risk factors, including updating the preventative health task force to specifically consider chronic illness related to ageing. This is a major omission that we think needs to be rectified. Secondly, looking at a national heat health watch warning system to be implemented under the national framework for scaled advice and warnings. This is again addressing a major omission currently in the intergenerational reports in that impacts of climate change on health have not been considered in Australian policy debates on health so far. Furthermore, we recommend that a heat health watch warning system be considered as an adjunct to a national fire alert system. This is an emotive issue in Australia and we can certainly justify the cost of implementing the two at once because they have the same vulnerabilities in terms of locations of where it would be necessary. Thirdly, we're looking at innovation of age-friendly urban environments. Modelling by access economics for preventative interventions suggests that a delay of five years in the onset of Alzheimer's disease would result in a 50% reduction in the incidence of new cases. Now, this is a really major saving. Furthermore, there is a lot of evidence from overseas and within Australia that age-friendly urban environments can delay the onset of Alzheimer's and other mental diseases like dementia for five years. So this is representing a relatively cost-effective solution to reducing the burden of chronic disease like dementia in an ageing population. Now, so to discuss those three points more thoroughly, the public health initiative, the health watch warning system, and age-friendly environments, is there a need for this kind of public campaign? Well, recent studies show that 50% of Australians do not know that dementia can be prevented. Similarly, elderly people do not know the, how to avoid the risks of heat stress. Now, this has been demonstrated in an Australian context. Uh, furthermore, when looking at, in the Australian context, an $810 million investment in public health campaigns targeting cardiovascular disease has been estimated by the Department of Health and Ageing to have produced $9.26 billion in direct savings to the health system. Now, those kinds of numbers, that kind of magnitude is enormous. Preventative health is really the best strategy for the government to reduce its health budget deficit. Now, you'll be interested to know what kind of alternatives we can present. Certainly, we could have promoted more increased investment in medical research and development. We could have looked at primary care reform changes to how primary care is often. And we could have looked at private health insurance. Now, in terms of medical research and development, we do not advocate an increase in funding to target chronic disease such as dementia. Partially because you'll see on this graph that the PBS is the system that's going to account proportionally for the greatest increase in health expenditure. And medical research and development simply adds new drugs and technologies to an already struggling PBS. We're also looking at primary care reform being an important but costly way of addressing preventative health. We think the responsibility should be families, individuals and communities to take on the preventative health initiatives. Furthermore, private health insurance is important in terms of cost offsetting, but has minimal impact on the health of Australians and does not improve overall health status. 
So basically, to justify a population-wide approach and preventative measures, consider what happened at the start of the 20th century, when improved sanitation conditions had more effect on overall health than all medical technologies and antibiotics combined. This is the shape of the 21st century. It's about preventative health. Thank you. Thank you. No question. Thanks.